you know, this year we were supposed to get the next installment of the Halloween franchise, a new take on Candyman, a new A Quiet Place movie, and many other movies, I'm sure. Instead, we're left feeling empty. everybody what's going on welcome to an all new talk and movies as always i am your host the real gino gino reynolds and today we're gonna be talking about a leftover from the disney fox merger i mean i have to tell you this one actually still has the old fox logo on it uh and not the new changed one that disney implemented to try to erase fox out of history today we're going to be taking a look at the new quote-unquote horror thriller The Empty Man. Uh, This is based on a comic book series uh, by Boom Studios. I've never read the comic. I can't find enough info on the comic. But from what I can can understand, uh, this one deviates a lot from the comic. Apparently the comic... Uh, which, by the way, if, if they would have followed the comic storyline, it would have been kind of timely because the comic is kind of about a pandemic. Um, uh, apparently, there's this empty man pandemic where uh, people are getting violent and stuff. I, I couldn't find a whole lot on it. Uh, this one is about a former ex-cop who is helping a, uh, a friend, we'll just call her a friend, uh, track down her missing daughter. Um and he ends up uh, finding out about this this urban legend uh, called uh, like the Empty Man, where if you blow into a bottle on a bridge and think about the Empty Man, he will you'll hear him the first day, see him the second day, and he gets you the third day, right? Kind of a you know a Bloody Mary thing or something like that. Um, okay. I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna spoil some of this movie. I'm not gonna spoil everything, but I will say this: uh, if you don't want to know anything, um, I was really kind of liking this movie. Um, again, I knew really nothing going in. I watched the first of the trailer because I needed a sound clip for my radio segment, but I didn't want to know anything. I, I like not knowing going into movies. Um, you know, I get surprises like uh, the Kid Detective. Uh, where if I don't know anything and then I walk into it and I, I'm like, I'm wowed by it. Right. Um, this one, it, it got me for a while. I was enjoying the detective story. Um, it, it's a little long. It's between like two and a quarter to two and a half hours somewhere. It's a little long, but I, I enjoy a good detective story. So I was enjoying this. Um, but here's the thing. Um, I, I can't recommend it. Um, maybe if it's free on Netflix or something like that, don't, don't pay much for this movie. Um, I'll say that. So now we're going to get into, uh, what I thought. Um, here's the thing. One of the biggest detriments, there's two big detriments in this movie. Uh, the first one is whether or not the empty man is real. Um, here's the thing. If this movie would have kept it a mystery, it would have been a lot more interesting when everything starts unfolding throughout the movie. But here's the thing. They they tell you at the beginning whether or not it's real. So you know already. I mean, yes, you've got this detective discovering things, right? But you've got this detective discovering things, but we already know whether or not this whole thing is real or not. And, and that really hurts this movie. The other thing that hurts this movie is the ending. The ending is pretty predetermined. Uh, I can't stand a predetermined ending where... It, now, if... I, I don't want to give away the ending, but... If it would have given... Um, if it would have given the hero of the of the story a choice right on what happens it might have been better even if it ended the same way if he would have had a choice but he seems to not really have a choice uh and it just kind of really hurt this one for me the ending i i hated it um that being said throughout the movie again i was enjoying the detective story as 
Uh, the detective, who's played by James Badgedale, who is uh, Chase on 24. That's what I knew him from. Um, it's him uh, looking for this missing girl and then all of a sudden there's other kids missing so he, he he's looking for them and uh he stumbles upon this cult and uh that's where um uh, that's where steven root comes in which he's not very he's not in the movie very much but he's just kind of kind of creepy when he's in this and, and he, i thought he did a pretty good job uh Marin ireland's in this she plays the mom of the missing girl uh she was i liked her a lot in hell or high water and so I like the people that are in this and James Badge Dale is a lot of times just by himself. Uh, and I thought he did a really good job, but just all in all though, again, knowing whether or not the empty man is real, any little red herring or any little clue that they try to give you, it's like, well, you know, where it's going to lead. It would be better if you didn't know. Uh, was is, Does this factor in if it's real or not? Does that factor whether it's real? Or not? Well, you, when you know the answer, it doesn't matter, does it? And so uh, <laughs> that really bugged me a lot. Um, but again, as a slow-burning detective story, I was enjoying it. I was enjoying following this character around as he discovered things, as things were happening. Um there was some stuff in this movie uh, about it being a horror movie. And this this plays into it. Um, even the most forgiving horror fan will not like this movie. Uh, they throw some horror elements into it. But really, mostly, this is a detective story. So if you're looking for a gory like horror movie, yeah, there's a few scenes. But not enough in its, like I said, really long runtime to justify it being a horror movie. I, I would probably put it more towards the thriller uh, aspect, even though there are horror elements. But, I mean, there's a few scenes that I thought are pretty good. That being said, it was people doing stupid horror movie things. Uh, there's a character uh, who our main character interviews. It's uh, one of the friends of, uh, of the missing girl. And... She, if you've seen the trailer, the first of the trailer, you know the scene I'm talking about where uh, they're doing the, the empty man thing on the bridge with an empty bottle and blowing into it and all that stuff, right? Well, he's interviewing this girl and she's scared out of her mind and uh, she's, that we can probably tell she's, she should be in day three because she explains we did this a couple days ago. So she's looking over her shoulder and seeing weird things. And so if you're afraid for your life, um, and though I know people like the cops wouldn't believe that she uh, was being haunted by a supernatural thing, whether or not that supernatural thing is real. Um, if she's having issues, yeah, let's, let's compromise ourselves by... Um, going to a spa, getting naked and going inside of a sauna. Um, yeah, you, maybe you're trying to relax, but she's walking into uh, horror movie trap territory. Um, she, one, you know, we see the first time we see her, she's afraid for her life. And the second time she's just trying to relax. Um, our main character walks into some horror movie tropes. There's just, they do a lot of dumb, dumb things. So yeah, I cannot recommend this as a horror movie. Uh, I do recommend it somewhat as a detective story, but then again, some of the aspects of the story, especially the ending, and, and especially, again, knowing what is real and what isn't, just really makes this, it, it bogs the movie down. Because there's nothing they do. While the, the twists and turns at the end, um, you're not going to see everything coming um you'll have a general idea that something's off you'll be like yeah i figured they were gonna do something with this or do something with that you may not figure out what it is i mean they don't give you enough clues really to do that but you know that something's off and that they you know a twist is coming uh and again the ending just plays into well i guess that's what's gonna happen um 
it kind of reminded me of the end of Hereditary, which I know a lot of people love that movie. I thought that movie was great until it didn't stick the landing. And I kind of feel a lot about this movie, too. If it would have stuck the landing, I probably could have forgiven knowing uh, whether or not something is real or not. Uh, I could have forgiven the runtime, but the ending is stupid. It is so stupid. And it's just... They start revealing some things, and it's stuff. It's like I figured that all, all figured out all that stuff all the way through, right? It's oh, I don't know. Some of the clues they're giving me, it's like yeah, something's up, something's up, something's up with this, something's up with that. They made it pretty obvious. There's this one thing they keep having our main character reveal, and he reveals it sometimes at the really odd, at some really odd times. He'll be like, I'm from, I grew, I came from San Francisco. I came from San Francisco. It's like, gee, I wonder if that's going to play into it. Uh, and of course it kind of does. Um, so yeah, it, I can't recommend this movie. I was in the theater by myself. Um, and I'm not surprised by that. No one's ever heard of this movie. Uh, and yeah, it's, I can't recommend it. I really can't unless you're getting it for free. And even then it's hard to recommend. Um, there's just... I feel like there was a lot of missed opportunity here. I would have really been curious to see it follow like the comic storyline where uh, it's not just involving these few people in like a cult, uh, which again, I don't know if the cults in the comic or not. Um, but I, I would have loved to have seen them release a pandemic movie now. How interesting would that have been? Uh, so yeah, I, I can't really recommend this. And I, I hate saying that because again, I enjoyed a lot about this movie, but then... It's like you you drop the ball. You really drop the ball, especially at the end. Uh, and yeah, it just kind of ruined it for me. That's going to be all for this edition of Talking Movies. If you like what you've heard here, please subscribe to the Real Geno YouTube channel. Like this video. If you have anything to say about The Empty Man, if you went and saw it, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below. And also, if you've read the comics, I'd like to know your thoughts on the comics as well. So again, you can put those in the comment section below as well. That's going to be all for this edition of Talking Movies. Until next time, I'm Gino Reynolds, The Real Gino. See you later.